You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen, explaining the possibilities in your love life and examining your mantourage dating experiences. I am here to help you do life and love on your terms by tipping the scales of love permanently in your favor. So don't forget to text this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends and let's get started. Hello, love a girl. It's your romantic fairy godmama coming to you, to your ear, to your innermost thoughts with a romantic quickie today. Now, today's romantic quickie is part two of the type of men that I dislike the most. And today we are covering, dun, dun, dun. It's all about his pleasure, man. It's all about his pleasure, man, men. Yeah, man or men, both. These type of men, I don't like them very much. These are usually men that were so spoiled by their mamas that they have no real interest in what a woman's interests are, what's special about her likes, her desires. It's all about what she can do for him and how she can fit into his world. And yes, there are still men like this that exist. Now, some of them are extreme cases. And some of them it would really be challenging to ever inspire change in. But do know that's not something that has to be permanent with men, but it's not fun. And I don't like these guys. They are not fun because it's all about his likes, his desires, his whims, his schedule, his this, his that, his the way he does things. And very, very little room for you and what you want. Now, I know. There are a lot of women in this world that are perfectly happy with a man like that because that means they don't have to make a decision. But I do know for most smart, ambitious women, which are the women that I work with, that that's only temporarily satisfying because they're suffering from decision fatigue. Once the decision fatigue is removed, then they recognize they are in a relationship with somebody who couldn't care less about meeting their needs. That includes in bed as well. And it's exhausting. It's not fun. These kind of guys are absolutely no fun at all. And I don't want you dating them for the most part. I mean, unless they're part of your mantrage and you're experimenting with them and you're playing with them and seeing what you can inspire. But if you're already just fatigued and, and you're going through this as well, nah, just go ahead and get rid of them. But no, they, these guys, ugh. Man, (sighs) just not fun. I will say my ex-husband had some of this. Now, some of these types of men that I talked about last last episode on the men I dislike the most, the lazy, lazy men. Now, some of these are personality traits. He's not going to be just lazy. He might be lazy and it's all about his pleasure, which was kind of my ex-husband. Actually, a lot of my ex-husband. And I mentioned in the last episode, I really hope he's outgrown some of this, but I have no idea because I haven't talked to him in years. Yeah, but I hope for his partner's sake, because I do believe he's with somebody else, that he has outgrown that and is able to really be an incredible man in her life. Now, so how do you know if you have one of these men? Well, this is one of my favorite things during the initial phase of mantraj dating is when we're learning, there's certain things we do that I teach my women to do through communication and engagement during the beginning that you'll start to see all this. And by the way, sometimes you'll see some of this. I want to be honest, like if you go out on a date with somebody and they're an incessant talker and all they do is talk about themselves, do recognize at the beginning that could be nervousness, okay? So it's your job to... And that's a lot of the work that I do with my women. It's your job to give him an opportunity to reroute that by, you know, different ways of structuring the date, the different things that you're doing, the different ways that you communicate with him and giving him that opportunity to show to you that maybe it is just nervousness and not um, a personality defect where it's really all he cares about. By the way, if you're raising a son, make sure you're not raising a son that that's all they care about is what they like and what they want. Make sure, you know, they have care and concern, especially for you and your your desires and your wants and your dreams. And I know that sounds very like, why would my kid care about all that? But what I'm saying is teach your 
young men to, I mean, we do a pretty good job of that for the most part with young girls, although, you know, sometimes we do screw that up. But with young men especially, it really is a mama's job to teach him that there's a world of women who aren't going to be there just to serve him and make everything okay for him in certain aspects, okay? That they're pieces that he has to input to and that he needs to find importance in what is of importance to her as well. So make sure you are teaching your young boys and raising them that way and you're not hand-holding them so much that they become just mama's boys and that's it. Okay, that's my soapbox for that, but we'll step off of that. I know most of you are not like that. Just definitely check yourself once in a while. Again, I do it on my side with my kiddo. My kiddo is female though. And trying to make that, that is really important that we're working on creating human beings that yes, do have confidence and they do think of themselves and that we're not just trying to fix the road for them, but we're preparing them for the road, which includes being thoughtful towards other people. So back to, to, the, to the guy though, the, the one that I'm not particularly fond of you dating unless you're just experimenting and having fun with it because these guys are exhausting, but it's all about his pleasure guy. Well, again, you can find this out very easily during the beginning parts of dating and you can eliminate them very quickly. It's not something that you have to keep around. Now, is this a cultural phenomenon? I will say, as I work with a lot of women of different cultures and who actually at times are reluctant to date in their own culture because of this, because a lot of these men have been raised in a way that they think that they're looking for a woman that makes it all about them. I'm going to say, Yes, there is sometimes a cultural component, but it does run across cultures. You might have some cultures that it's more prevalent than others, but it's not a given. And sometimes it's very surface level. So knowing what you're doing at the beginning of dating and the way you engage with these type of men at the beginning of dating will help you see whether or not this is very surface level stuff or if this is actually a profound defect like we were talking about before. Because a lot of men, it's just, It's just a matter of the way that we're engaging with them. And then all of a sudden, when we tweak how we engage with them, it opens up a world, especially when you step into this world of becoming an adored woman, it opens up a world where they invest a lot more in what makes you happy. Because underneath it all, men are really wired to want to make us happy. Some of them have gotten some wires crossed through environment and through training, through uh, hurts, through all kinds of stuff that again, makes for some challenging situations when you are a woman who wants to be cared about and adored. But on the same page, we have to, that's what we're doing through dating is we can assess what's surface level, what is just, you know, a little bit of just a cross wiring that just needs to be tweaked, bam, gone. Or is this a super profound defect that even maybe misogynistic of nature, which is not as common as we women would like to think. So I want to make it very clear, you have way more power to be able to inspire men to amazing things than you've ever given yourself credit for. And if you really hate dating and you're not fond of men, then you need to look internally first because there's a lot going on with you as well, okay? Even if you've had some really, really shitty things happen, there's always stuff that's going on within us internally that could uh, repeat patterns and allow for, you know, other crappy experiences. Maybe not of the magnitude of the previous experiences, but other crappy experiences. And you want to make sure, again, that you're addressing those and tweaking how you're showing in the world of dating in order to attract a much better experience and much better men, which is completely doable with mantourage dating. Hey, lover girl. Thanks for joining me today and texting this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends. If you have a question that you'd like to submit for on-air consideration or want to learn more about working with me, then meet me over at singlesmartfemale.com. See you there.